there. Supremacists on the same moral plane. I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on Speed one side and you bit. had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Side, sir? You said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Are, are well, I do think there's blame. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. And, 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 and if you reported it accurately, you would say. They should have been Charlottesville. Excuse me. The protest. Excuse me. They did themselves down as you, and you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down? Yes. Excuse me. The answer is yes. Take down, We've already are we started. Are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers. And you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats you got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too they'll post this whole clip we don't need to keep watching it's just they keep asking the same question over and over but you know this 2 minute and 30 second clip where he says first he says there were fine people on both sides right in the group that was there for the statue protest not for anything else the statue protest and then he makes it even more explicitly clear Later, he says, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis. I'm not talking about the white nationalists, right? I'm talking about the people who were protesting the taking down of, to them, an important statue. And the people who were protesting the statue itself. And he said there were fine people in both of those groups. But then you had the neo-Nazis on the right, and you had the Antifa on the left. All right? Very moderate stance from Trump. It's just... Right down the middle. Like, you know what? There, you know, there were, there were the good people in the protest, and then... There are the people who used it as an occasion for violence, right? To push their agenda. And the media ran for that with, with that for years, years. They said that Trump said, oh, neo-Nazis and white nationalists are very fine people. It literally takes a, a two minute Google search and then a minute and a half of screwing around with ad block to find the clip MSNBC or I'm sorry, CNBC. That was it. That's it. There's, there was... <laughs> So they lie, they lie, and they lie, and they lie. And they didn't push back on Kamala when she lied about this. And it's, a lot of the other stuff she lied about, you could say, well, you know, maybe it's a difference of opinion, maybe it's a matter of how you're, your perspective. But this is just so obvious, right? And I knew the media lied. I've known the media lies for a long time, and I knew there was a bias. But I, when Trump ran, I never saw it more blatantly. And then... It just got worse and worse and worse. When Trump was president, I think the most egregious one, the silliest one, but it was just the most flagrant, was Trump was visiting Shinzo Abe in Japan. And they were doing they were doing everything together. You know, they were they're friends. They were friends. <laughs> uh until Shinzo got killed. But they're going around, you know, experiencing all these Japanese cultural experiences. And they go to a koi pond and they got the little box of food and they're just, you know, scooping it in, scooping the little fish pellets in. And then what the media showed was a picture of Trump just being a real bastard, just dumping it in. Shinzo Abe standing there, you know, properly dignified as Japanese people are. And Trump, the, the boisterous, loud, rude Americans just dumping food into the koi pond, right? And they ran with that story for several days. Trump snubs Japanese allies. Trump disrespects Japanese culture. Well, 
when you look at the video, and this is, again, it's so flagrant. They're just walking along, doing their thing, getting some photos. Somebody says to Shinzo, hey, we got to go. And he's like, okay. Dumps his food. Trump goes, all right. Dumps his food. And then they move. They go on their merry way. They go and do some meeting or go to some other cultural site, right? What a strange thing to lie about. They hate him so much that they need to lie about how he feeds fish. They need to lie about him disrespecting our Japanese allies just to make him look bad, right? And that's beyond any of the other stuff, right? The stuff that it's maybe a little bit easier to make a story about, right? It's, you know, Trump sometimes says things. He's not very clear. Or there's a story that they know that they can kind of spin, right? So Trump meeting Kim Jong-un, right? They spun that for weeks. Trump's, uh, Trump is legitimizing dictators. It's like, what well, should Trump not speak to dictators? By the way... I think this is the most insane policy that the U.S. has adopted in the last, really the last four years. We don't talk to our enemies. It's like, seriously? Really? We, we, Joe Biden hasn't had a meeting with Putin since the war broke out, right? Kim Jong-un and Biden have never talked, partially because Kim says he only wants to talk to Trump. But they respected Trump, right? The fact that Trump gets along with dictators, that he can go and have a good time, you know, chatting with Kim Jong-un, get along with Putin and Xi Jinping. That's good. You want them to be able to. You want our leaders to have a good relationship with our foreign adversaries, right? Or potential adversaries. Because that relationship built on trust and mutual understanding means that it's less likely that we're to come into conflict, right? Kennedy had a direct line to Khrushchev's desk and vice versa. RFK Jr. talks about that as a kid, right? They would like pick up the phone and Khrushchev would be like, hello, hello. And JFK would get mad at them and chase them out of the room. It's like, you, don't play with that. That's important. So it's like, I, I see they hate the man so they can, they make up stories like that. Right? Oh, he's legitimizing dictators. But, you know, the fish thing, this, it's just, it should be apparent to everybody that the media lies. And then if there's a story about Trump, if you see MSNBC or CNN or ABC say anything about Trump, you should just immediately assume that it's false and then go look, look at it yourself. 